So we're going to be heading toward the Croft Mine today. Uh, Croft Mine is a very old mine, one of the oldest uh, known to operate in Putnam County. And um, it's named after John Croft, the landowner who leased it to a number of different parties, uh, owned by the Croft family and his descendants. And uh, we're going to see what, what it looks like in 2017. go and check out some of the surface features of the mine. There's a lot of evidence that's on the surface that gives you some indication as to what's underground uh, in terms of how they operated the mine. And um, right now we're going to check out a, uh, a horse swim and we're going to also investigate some minor diggings that are on the surface. We're looking at a uh, center for a horse swim. There would have been a pole uh, stuck right in that hole and it attached to a uh, whim which rotates with a coil of uh, rope around it. That rope would attach to a horse. A horse would basically walk around this here and that would wind and unwind the cable. The reason a horse would do that is because by doing so, it would be uh, attached to a, uh, a bucket or a, uh, um, like a shaft bucket to lower and raise or up and down the shaft. That's right over here. If you were, uh, Riding your uh, your horse and buggy up the dirt trail, uh, you'd probably have seen a large wooden head frame here. Um, typical of the head frames in the New Jersey, New York area, uh, they often had uh, siding on it, wooden siding and a roof even above. So it almost looked like a like a like a structure. You might not even know. It doesn't look typical of a uh, head frame out west. But anyhow, underneath that would have been the uh, a whole mechanism for hoisting ore uh, and possibly men up and down the uh, shaft. Rock in this area is very hard, um, so it's difficult to blast. It requires a lot of money, a lot of work to blast the rock. Um, if they can get right to the ore, especially if it outcrops on the surface like it did here, then it's better to start where you see the ore and then follow your way deeper into the ground. And then if you have to drive an adit tunnel, either for drainage purposes or to haul some of the iron out, you do that. Okay, so we just reached the entrance right over here to the mine. Uh, it is basically a 45 to 50 degree incline. So we only have one rope, so we have to go one at a time. But as each one goes down, uh, the next one goes. Uh, we have a crew of about nine people uh, and we're ready to do this. So this added tunnel that we're walking through is about five and a half feet in height. It's just enough room to get miners in and out and to push ore cars in and out of the mine. Some of the artifacts that have been left behind were really just dropped here when they abandoned the mine. I'm talking about compressed air line right here. This is what they use to power the tools that they use to uh, drill holes. And you can even see sections of rail here on the ground. Look how corroded this is. I mean, it's just, it would just flake off in your hands. I mean, I, I don't even want to touch it, but um, this was, uh, this is a section of rail here. This is what it looks like after enough time. It, it, it may not look like much, but every artifact helps build the story of what was going on in this place. Um, everything from this hook, which held the compressed air pipes, to the rail on the ground, to tool just left on the ground, rusting uh, immensely. It all is just part of interpreting what this mine was all about. You can kind of feel a draft over here. Uh, it's because the air that 
is coming down the shaft that we saw earlier, it actually circulates and it goes through this stoke over here and, and climbs its way up to the surface. Um, but anytime that you feel air flow like this, it's always a good sign because it means that the mine is breathing fresh air. Some of this rock here is, is magnetite. It's just solid iron ore. You can see over here, uh, this bluish color, slightly metallic looking. This is all the stuff that they were looking for. This is their gold, iron ore magnetite. Over here, heading this direction, what looks like a collapse of rock right now was, uh, was actually the tunnel. Uh, it's just completely obscured by broken rock that fell in from, uh, from the surface. It just, over time, just fills up this space. But uh, this used to be the way the miners exited the mine. You would just walk through this rubble here and you'd be back, uh, you'd go another 100 or so feet and you'd come right out of the side of the hill. But today it's all obscured from Rockfall. We've got like a whole ecosystem down here in, just, in this, this uh, mine. We have a marbled salamander scooting around. He's warming up on my hands. He's getting a little more active. We've got, shine your light. He's right there. Millipedes. We have a, a toad and at least three leopard frogs. Two of them are in the drill hole. And then if you look up, 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 there's our fruit source, cave crickets. From up there, you can dive into the water. Go ahead, I'm going to push your butt. Go ahead. Oh, I can't. I have no purchase. Go ahead. Push. There we go. There's no room to hold on. Hold on. Go ahead. Oh, you're throwing the... You're... There's a rock there, sorry. All right. Oh, push. Dad's gonna be another thing. Nick was a lot oh, better climber yeah. than me. There's no handholds in there. <laughs> Followed this tunnel behind me to the last stope. Okay, it's a gigantic stope, and it reaches the water level. But as it reaches down underneath the water, it actually becomes very vertical and very spacious. And we uh, we actually had a fishing pole attached to a, a flashlight, and we lowered that down. And we lowered it down what I would estimate to be about 50 feet or more. And suddenly the entire space just opened up. Uh, we could see compressed air pipes. We could see other ladders down there, uh, a whole uh, system of woodwork. And the best part is it looks like we actually found an old ore car uh, just resting by itself, uh, not filled with any rock or ore. 
um, but it's it's far down there and it's really tough to make out but that's what we think it is uh, we're gonna have to do some more uh, work and, and, and determine if that's in fact what we think it is but if that's the case that is a true find I mean that's a that's a museum piece down there there is probably an entire museum of artifacts and relics from the past in this mine. Just crank feet down and okay. keep your legs up. Stiff. Catch your ass. Right. <laughs> cool. He just keeps going. You can clearly see the different um, levels, how they progressed down here. And they petered out at the end, a couple little drifts that they just, like, there's nothing here, and they moved down to the next level. And, uh, and it obviously it goes down even farther from, from down the water level. So it's pretty cool. You just, you just can, can never see it all. Sometimes you just gotta keep making return visits because there just isn't enough time to just take everything in. And the more you learn about the mind, the more clues you pick up, uh, the better you're able to understand the history of the mind, the story that's left behind. All right, so we're gonna go down this other stope right here uh, behind me. It's a very, uh, very small looking hole, but it actually opens up quite a bit. This is an extension of the stope that we entered the mine from. Um, at the bottom of this is the Adit Tunnel, which uh, heads out of the hillside in that direction there. Although it's been uh, eroded shut, just probably by time. So we're taking you now into a different part of the mine that's completely isolated from where we were. It's isolated by rockfall, um, <clears throat> but back in the day this was one uh, connected space. And directly behind me is a cross-cut tunnel, um, which itself is partially caved as you can see. Um, we're going to take you down here and we're going to go to the original adit level, okay, and we're going to try to follow it as much as we can. Oh wow. I think it's, uh, wow, it's mostly blocked off here. I'm gonna try to go this way and see if we can reach the tunnel. Uh, yeah, look at this. So you can see the tunnel makes sort of an S-curve. Uh, there's a, a hook to hold the compressed air pipe on the right. I don't see any tracks on the floor, but some of this is uh, built up from erosion. Uh, but this is uh, the closest point uh, you can get to the surface with the added. Just think in the mid 1800s, sitting at this vantage point, you would have heard thunderous ore cars, people grunting, pushing heavy ore cars down this track tunnel, and uh, all the echoes and reverberations of 19th century industrial history. Today's all quiet. With today's technology, you know, you can really uh, see far better than the miner could see underground. And you can far better interpret uh, what you're looking at. 
we were probably the first we were probably amongst the first people to go down into this mine with hard hats on. The miners, they didn't wear hard hats back when they mined it. They had soft caps, so they didn't have the protection on their head. In terms of lighting, we have high-powered LED lights, incandescent uh, halogen miners, head candles, and whale oil lamps. So, you know, it really affords a better observation as to what it's like down there. Yeah, I'd say all in all, we, uh, we learned a whole lot more about this mine. There isn't really that much written about it. So, when you can't find the history in the history books, you find it on foot. Well, we just had a very long and thorough mission, so we need to have a bit of fear that, that compensates. That's the equivalent of the adventure that we just went on. So we're talking about 9.3% uh, uh, percent alcohol, you know, something that's going to knock you down after uh, a lot of hard work. We're thinking of the uh, Millhouse Northwest Territory IPA. I will be getting the Hell's Lager because we just dug ourselves out of the ground a uh, proverbial hell and uh now it's egregiously hopped it's not this one's not egregiously hopped i refuse to have egregiously hopped uh, beers ipas are off the menu unless they're subtly hopped i was considering the new belgium fat tire <laughs> consider it done why'd you consider I went with wine because I wine a lot, so why not? <laughs> and Dave? I'm going with the Millhouse as well because it's egregiously hopped. <laughs> Anything that's egregious is right up my alley. So uh, I'd like to make a toast to all of us for uh, keeping this thing going and just like not only visiting a lot of great minds and, and seeing history, but just the awesome like friendship that we made doing that. I really uh, value that a lot and uh, I drink to that now and I hope to continue to drink to this for uh, many years to come. Can you tell us what the Hudson chain was? Hudson chain was uh, stretched across the Hudson. It was a long chain forged of iron from local mines to prevent the British from sailing up the uh, Hudson River. And where was it strung? Right at, Bol at Bear Mountain Bridge? Well, right here at Cold Spring. Right at Cold Spring? Right at Cold Spring. There was a, a furnace uh, right here. In the, 17, in the 1770s, 1770s, during the Revolutionary War? Absolutely. So that iron had to come from somewhere? Yes, and it came from local mines, and I don't know offhand which mines contributed. From my, from my memory, the Sterling Mine, the Clove Mine, and the O'Neill, they actually have it on the ledgers. That oh, O'Neill. Oh, yeah. okay. There's a lot of other ones that claim it, like Ringwood and whatever, but they don't think it actually came from Ringwood. So almost no words can, can quite describe the, the uh, degree of reward and uh, friendship and uh, just, just sheer discoveries, out-of-the-box discoveries, that we found today, uh, you know, we've been to the mine before. It's not a new mine, but it feels like it's a new mine because everything that we, uh, I mean, throughout our mission, we we just constantly kept like getting new perspectives on on the mine and what went on there. I mean, just collecting all the clues from underground and, and building like a, a solid picture. I, I think like I feel like I know so much more about this mine.